This episode's real bad. Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers then and discuss them. Today we're exploring the 25th episode of the show Power Rangers Turbo, as well as the 230th episode overall, titled When Time Freezes Over. We start this episode outside where Elgar and crew were doing something in the forest. TJ is watching with binoculars and we haven't seen them since the Turbo movie. TJ tells Alpha to call in the others. On the ship, Deep Jox is looking at herself in the mirror getting ready to launch. She's going to use a freeze key to, well, freeze things. She sends Perontrons excited for this new plan. At the power chamber, everyone sans TJ meets up and they see the freeze key is getting moved in the forest. TJ is checking out what looks like a giant missile and he tells the others about it. Then the freeze key is coming in and TJ surmises that they're firing it somewhere. Then we see that the Phantom Ranger is there too, but he's checking out TJ for some reason. Then he sees Rygog there yelling. Then Piranatrons accidentally touch the freeze key and Elgar knocks it over and it breaks into pieces. That was disturbing. TJ hears Elgar say the word freeze key. He goes to call in reinforcements, but then the Piranatrons find him, and Rygog wants to teach him a lesson. Then the Phantom Ranger comes in, saving TJ, and Rygog starts to retreat. Then the Phantom Ranger continues to beat up all the Piranatrons. The other Rangers flip in, and they see that they're useless now thanks to the Phantom Ranger. Then Justin asks who that guy is. Seriously guys, the Phantom Ranger! Cassie gets all wet in her suit before the Phantom Ranger disappears again. Justin tells TJ that the freeze key is pointing at the sun, so they need to hurry. Shift in the turbo. The five rangers rush toward the freeze key coming out of the forest. Then Elgar puts on science goggles, getting ready to launch the freeze key, but TJ gets over to him, hitting him away. He tries to figure out how to stop it, but a Perontron pulls him away, allowing Elgar to actually begin launching the missile. They're too late. The freeze key has gone off into the sky and the rangers are freaking out. The rangers call out their turbine laser to save the day, firing into the air, blowing up the missile. Okay, that was easy. Episode over. Elgar admits that was a heck of a shot, and he leaves with the Perontron showing up at the ship. Divatox yells at Elgar, who blames the Phantom Ranger. Divatox then sends Elgar out into the ocean, I guess. Divatox then says that maybe there will be one more chance, and we see that Elgar is outside. At the youth center, Stone, he lives! Anyways, TJ, Ashley, and Cassie are sparring, and uh, TJ is secretly good at martial arts, apparently. Then, Bulk and Skull show up, now vacuum salesmen. They spread feathers everywhere, and they're going to clean it up with a new vacuum that they're selling. Skull says it's clogged, and somehow it reverses on the stone, who gets dirt and a bunch of other stuff all over him. Great work, everyone. Bulk and Skull shrink away. We meet a new monster named Clockster, who will reverse time until the freeze key is okay. Divatox sends him out, and Elgar secretly walks by with an octopus on him. Clockster appears in the city and he makes time move in double speed. Why? The editors of Power Rangers just figure out how to do this. We see it's even affecting people on the ship, except for Divatox for some reason. Then Clockster makes things go in reverse and they even play the background music backwards. Then we see Cat doing a dive from season three. Demetria and Alpha figure out that everything is going backwards and they try to call the Rangers, but they can't talk to them. Then we get all the way back to the Rangers blowing up the freeze key and now it's all the way back to before they even ran out into the forest. Clockster stops. Then Divatox shows up by the villains and she tells Elgar to take the freeze key back to the subcraft and then the rangers come out on cue from Divatox. She tells the rangers to put up their parkas because there's going to be a cold front coming. They all teleport out. TJ is confused as to what she's going to freeze and why she didn't just fire it now. Justin then figures out that they're freezing the entire earth somehow and Carlos calls the others who are driving around together to find the freeze key. Then we see that Divatox is in a snowy ice cave talking about how the freeze key is working perfectly. She goes in to see Elgar and Clockster, and then Clockster just touches the freeze key for some reason. It freezes all of time since he controls time. Then everyone out of the power chamber are frozen. Then Justin and Carlos have to leave, but Demetrius says that they'll need to morph, and then they'll be immune for a few seconds, so they need to hurry. Shift in the turbo. Green and blue try to get the freeze key in the cave, but they're not fast enough freezing them. Demetrius says, unfortunately, there's nothing they can do about this. Then luckily, the Phantom Ranger is somehow unaffected by this, and he teleports blue and green out of there before he makes the freeze key disappear somehow. Deep Talk starts screaming at Clockster about how he shouldn't have touched the key, and apparently he was just curious. Also, all the Rangers are free now, and somehow they knew that they were frozen. Elgar and Clockster are on a rooftop, getting ready to reverse time again, and Alpha tells the helmetless Rangers in the power chamber to get back out there. Back to action. They show up, and Elgar sends Piranatrons forth, who fight the Rangers while TJ takes on Elgar and Clockster. Then Clockster starts making things go in reverse all over again. This might be the laziest episode of Power Rangers yet. Their Japanese footage this episode is just their own footage in reverse. We go all the way back to before the fight and Deep Talks can't see a thing of what's going on because her periscope came out of tar? What? Then she just fires the torpedoes for no goddamn reason whatsoever, making Clockster giant. So that entire section earlier with the fight was completely pointless. Elgar and crew leave, so the rangers call their Turbo Zords, forming the Turbo Megazord. They kick Clockster in the face, and then they use the Turbo Megazord Saber in the weirdest fashion yet, before they end up doing the spin-out attack, killing time. On the ship, Divatox is mad at Elgar because they had three chances and they failed every single one. 
Detox then says that she wants to go so far back in time that none of them are even born. At the youth center, we see that Stone is using the freeze key to make popsicles. Apparently, Justin rewired it. He gives the ranger color-coded popsicles, but Cassie gets a yellow one. Blasphemy. Then Bulk and Skull show up trying to practice their sales pitch against Stone, who gets his button-up shirt ripped off by the vacuum, and he's pissed. Wouldn't his undershirt have come off too? I'm just trying to see some nip. The end. This episode's real bad. I mean, it's better than some Mighty Morphin episodes, to be honest, but we saw some really great episodes before this one when this team first started, and now they're really fumbling all over the place with these episodes. Like there's barely any Japanese footage to come and save the bad plot. And really that's the biggest issue with this episode. The plot straight up sucks. And also I'm sorry, but Justin is smart enough to just rewire damn alien technology now. Are you serious? He's a 12 year old with the intelligence of a high schooler, not a prodigy. Next time starts a two episode arc that will hopefully be entertaining at least. But until then, may the power protect you.